Adobe was among the first major software manufacturers to go subscription only. How's that playing out? Are photographers getting a good deal? Or is Adobe just taking us for more and more money every month? Let's explore what's actually happened. Hey there, I'm Aaron from techphotoguy.com. Be sure to subscribe to get my next update coming to you in the tech photo world. And let's talk about subscription software, specifically Adobe Creative Cloud. When Adobe went subscription only, there were a lot of photographers that were really unhappy with that plan. Adobe was among the first major companies to go with subscriptions only, and now it's pretty common. There's all sorts of software out there that you, you don't buy a perpetual license for it anymore. You pay every month or every year. Everything from apps to services. Subscriptions are a current way of life, and Adobe Creative Cloud fits right into that. But with any subscription software, including Creative Cloud, and when we're talking about photography, specifically Photoshop and Lightroom, the question comes down to, is the company giving you enough value to make it worth paying on an ongoing basis? Now, you might think that this is relatively new, but it really isn't. It was 2011, over 10 years ago, when Creative Suite 5.5 introduced monthly options for payments. And it was 2013, nearly 10 years ago, when Adobe ended perpetual forever licenses for new products. So we're almost a decade into the only option being for Photoshop and Lightroom to purchase a subscription. How's that going? Has Adobe lived up to its end of the deal to make it worth it? Let's take a look at Photoshop and Lightroom Classic right now and see what's been added and whether that's the deal. All right, we are looking at Lightroom Classic. I assume that if you're the type who's really curious about if the subscription is worth it, that you're probably not using the Lightroom Cloud version of the software. I find uh, most of the power users are using Classic because it still has more capabilities than the newer cloud version. Anyway, so let's run through some of the things that have been added to Lightroom Classic since Adobe went subscription only. I'm not going to go all the way back to like 2015 or when uh, Lightroom 6, which was the first subscription version, was released, but let's start at 2018 because... That was when Adobe added the ability to do HDR panoramas, and they added the ability to use HEIC files, the high efficiency image format that Apple made standard on the iPhone. And with that, Adobe has obviously kept up. This is a photograph shot on my iPhone in Las Vegas, so we're gonna use this for demonstrating a couple things here today. So that was back in 2018, it added those features. 2019, Adobe continued to add new features. Um, it added the enhanced details option during raw file imports. Uh, if we go into the develop module, we have the texture slider over here on the right, which, um, you know, a little hard to see exactly what it's doing here as I zoom out, but if I, if I zoom in, we can see that it's Affecting a bit some of the contrast in the buildings, not the greatest example for that. But so we've got this new texture slider. We now have the ability to batch HDR and uh, do batch panoramic merges. Uh, Lightroom got the ability to export as PNG finally in 2019. And when we are merging panoramas, Lightroom can fill the edges so that you do get a nice... Uh, rectangular crop on those. So uh, jumping forward into 2020, now we have preset defaults per camera. Uh, one of the things we did get is local uh, HSL, the hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments. Those have always been there over kind of as global adjustments. You know, if I really wanted to, you know, mess with the blue sky here, I can turn it purple or I can turn it teal. I'll reset that to default. Um, but I can now make those types of adjustments locally so I could, you know, do my brush and, you know, make a selection. Maybe I'll select this building over here. I'm just going to do very rough selection there, um, you know. And if I wanted to, over here on the right-hand side in my local adjustments, I can start making adjustments to that. A little Technicolor there. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and delete that mask. We're going to talk about masks a little bit more though in a moment. 
Uh, one of the things that also was added in 2020 um, is that uh, split toning has been renamed to color grading. And now instead of just shadows and highlights, you can add color grading to the midtones. And so, you know, perhaps I want to have an, uh, you know, blue, blue shadows here, you know, some red on my highlights, midtones in the orange. I don't know why I'm using this picture to demonstrate all this, but hey, if you're into that kind of a color grading thing, you can now do that directly in Lightroom. I am gonna undo all that. They also made a bunch of performance improvements in 2020. In 2021, they added capabilities to use Lightroom natively with the Apple Silicon M1 Max, as I'm doing right now. They added super resolution, which lets you really enlarge an image. Uh, they added live view tethering for Nikon cameras. Um, they changed all the way that masking works. And I showed a little bit of this already, um, you know, but when it comes to masking, we had some big changes in late 2021. Um, let's pull something up here and demonstrate how that works. Here we go. Um, Let's pull up a photo from a conference I was at where David Lloyd was giving a presentation. If I want to add a mask here, I'm going to hop over to the develop module. I can click on the mask over on the right hand side. And, you know, we've always had the ability to use a brush for local adjustments, but now I'm going to hit select subject and let it decide what it thinks the subject of this image is. And it thought it was these these people here, which I don't think is a terrible default to go to. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, one of the things you can do with these new masks is they are AI powered. You can create entirely two masks. You can add and subtract. When you do create a mask, in addition to select subject and select sky, obviously new features added since we got Creative Cloud. We have the brush. We can also do a gradient, uh, either linear or radial. We can select a color range. We can select a luminance range. And so, you know, what you'll see is it did a pretty good darn job of selecting these people here. So a lot of masking enhancements in Lightroom in the last year or two. One of the other things that we got uh, this year in 2022, I'm just going to undo this here. One of the things we got in 2022 is we got the ability with presets to adjust the amount. So let me just pick a preset here. Let's say I wanted to make this you know, an infrared look on this image. And you'll see on the left-hand side, I've selected that infrared preset and up above the preset panel, I now have a slider where I can adjust the amount of that preset that gets applied. Kind of wacky on this black and white one. Let's go ahead and adjust maybe a uh, creative preset. Maybe I wanted to give it kind of this cool matte look and I decided Maybe that's uh, eh, not quite enough. I really want to take it to the extreme so I can I can double it up, basically go to 200% here. Um, and so we get the ability to do those adjustments with a preset instead of just all or nothing. Ongoing throughout the years, Adobe has added new camera support to Lightroom. Um, and so they've kept up as camera manufacturers, lens manufacturers have released new models. And of course, they're keeping up with operating system updates as well, both on Windows and on the Macintosh. So quite a few updates to Lightroom over the years. Let's talk a little bit about Photoshop, which is obviously the big other tool that photographers use. Photoshop, if we go back to you know 2013, 2014, when it went subscription, it got new smart sharpening features. Let me uh, let me actually just pull an image up in Photoshop, and we can take a look at what Photoshop has. Okay, I've pulled my Vegas skyline or my New York New York skyline photo up. So we've got smart sharpen. 2014, it gained perspective warp and updates to the content aware tools, which, you know, are quite important. Focus masking came in 2014, as well as some new blur tools. In 2015, one of the features that got added is to have multiple layer styles. So, you know, you've always been able to set options on a layer, you know, by going to layer style and, you know, perhaps saying you wanted to add a drop shadow or things like that. Um, you know, previously you could only do one style per layer. 
as of 2015, you can do multiple. So if you wanted to have both a uh, inner shadow and an outer shadow or a drop shadow, you could do that. There was a nice UI refresh in 2015, gave us a, you know, updated look. They added gesture support for touchscreen laptops, you know, with Windows. Um, and then in 2016, they added a new template selector for new documents. Uh, they added a search feature that, you know, is actually pretty slick and a lot of people know, don't know about. If you go in the upper right-hand corner of Photoshop by default, you've got this uh, hourglass icon. If you click on it, it brings up a search discover panel. And so if you're trying to, don't know why it's giving me the tour. I've been here before. <laughs> if you're trying to find something, you can bring this up and it will search for tools. It will search for help. It will search for panels. You know, so if you're like gradients, gradients, where are the gradient? I can search for gradient, get information on where the gradient tool is. You'll see it highlighted over here on the left. Um, maybe I wanted to know how to do a, a new fill layer with gradients. You know, it brought up that function, giving me the options. And so that discover using that search feature is quite slick. Let's see what else happened. 2017 was a, a big year for Photoshop. They got new organization for brushes. Uh, they're including like a thousand new brushes that ship with Photoshop by default. The curvature pen tool was added. Um, select subject uh, was first added in 2017, which now you can just go up to select, click subject. You'll see, you know, spoiler alert, we've also got things like focus area, sky, uh, and some of these other things that have been added. So if I do select subject, you'll see I've kind of got the, the marching ants going around my, uh, my scene here. Let's see how good of a job it did. So I'm going to inverse that selection and then delete everything other than the selection. And I got a pretty good cutout there. It decided whatever's in the lower right, apparently it doesn't think should be part of the image. What was that there? Oh, interesting that that front section of building there wasn't included. But uh, with all that, you can see it did a pretty good job. Um, you know, one of the other things added in 2017 was the ability to copy and paste layers. Uh, they also added the the high efficiency image file format support to Photoshop as well when they'd added it to Lightroom. Uh, you've got color and luminance range masking now. I'm going to deselect things there. And a bunch of performance improvements. As we come forward in 2018, we've got a frame tool. Uh, the ability to lock a workspace so that you get your things set up the way that you like it and then don't accidentally goof it up. That's kind of a nice feature. New compositing engine in 2018 to blend things together. And then in 2019, they added object selection, uh, new enhanced uh, transform maps, uh, some new keyboard shortcuts got added. Um, there were a bunch of content aware fills in 2019 and Adobe added support for animated GIFs. In 2020, a bunch of Photoshop uh, performance improvements were released. And then the big news in 2020 was the first version of Photoshop for iPad. It was pretty sparse at first. Um, but they've made a lot of updates to that along the way. Also in 2020, they improved that select subject function. They added the cloud PSD file format. So you can now collaborate on cloud native Photoshop documents, um, you know, and share those on the web, make basic comments, changes on the web, things like that. Um, they uh, enhanced the selection and masking features to better deal with hair. Uh, you know, so when you're doing a selection or a masking on people, um, you know, it does that a lot better now. Uh, much like they did in Lightroom, they replaced uh, split toning with color grading. And so those features are now available in Photoshop as well. And they also added uh, neural filters, AI powered neural filters. More on that in just a moment. As we go into 2021, they gave native support for Apple M1, Apple Silicon processors. Um, you know, if you're doing object selection with auto masking, it can now show that on hover. Um, more new neural filters in 2021. Let me, oh, let's see, what can we do in neural filter? Let's, let's open this image up in Photoshop. And so if I go up to filter, and then neural filters. 
you see there's several neural filters here. Um, let's see, what do I want to play with? This might be an interesting one to turn on the landscape mixer, which can do things like take a summer image and make it winter or take a winter image and make it summer. So let's see if I were to turn this into winter, what would it look like with this atrium scene here from Las Vegas? These plants and these uh, art under this greenhouse, and it has turned that into a winter scene by adding snow to the whole thing, cooling it all down. That's kind of fun. I'm going to undo that just out of curiosity. What does it think autumn would look like? Oh, okay. It added a bunch of fall color to our image. You know, these are all able to be adjusted different levels of it. So this is something you can have fun with. Uh, you know, there's also more practical filters such as, let me remove, remove Autumn from her photo here, but you also have the ability to do a super zoom, which uh, being able to do something like zoom the image 6X and have it use AI to automatically fill things in. Now, if you look down at the bottom of my screen here, even on my nearly brand new M1 Mac, it says this is going to take 10 minutes to do. So I'm going to cancel out of this, but you'll just have to trust me. This is pretty cool. Um, essentially, it's doing an intense zoom and then using AI to make it look as good as possible. I would encourage you to play around with some of these neural filters if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, one of the other things that uh, Photoshop does and has added is, you know, sky replacement enhancements. And so, you know, if I've got an image, I can go up to edit uh, where we've got sky replacement and from that screen I can pick you know hey what sort of a sky do I want right you know we had uh, you know we had our basic image let's let's go for a sunset sunsets make things look better right and one of the things you'll see is it's not just replacing the sky but it's it's subtly changing the overall lighting in the scene you know those buildings the light on those buildings is adjusting based on the sky that's being chosen so that it looks natural and that's one of the things that sets you know kind of the current sky replacement capabilities away from just a basic like you know mask and replace yeah that one's not too bad these are some of the cool things that Adobe has added to Photoshop since it went subscription only. And this year, um, there's not a lot of core advancements in the Photoshop desktop app quite yet, uh, but there have been a ton of advancements in the iPad app with content aware fill, background removal, select subject, including hair and people, adding auto tone, color, contrast. And so, you know, it's really up to you to decide whether this is all worth it, but Adobe has added quite a bit to Lightroom and Photoshop since they went to subscriptions. So what do you think? Do you feel like Adobe's making it worth it for us? For me personally, I think, you know, maybe they had a slow spot there a few years ago, but in recent years, Adobe is pushing forward with both Photoshop and with Lightroom to give us what we're looking for. Some of the new AI powered masking developments, the AI neural filters, you know, they really are pushing new technology into these products at the same price that they have been for a decade. We've been paying $10 a month for the Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop photography plan for nearly 10 years. I mean, is there anything else you're buying right now that you can say the price hasn't gone up in 10 years? So, I really think they're doing an okay job with this. I look forward to continued development as they compete with other software in this space, right? There's companies like Skyloom with Luminar and Capture One and other AI-powered editing software that are giving Adobe competition to help keep them driving forward. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment down below. Have you been on board with subscriptions all along? Were you a skeptic? How do you feel about it right now? Again, subscribe hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. All of that helps keep me here bringing you new tech photo content every week. Until then, take care.